we'll still be stuck in the same place in Acts 17. I can't seem to move on, Jackson. Move on when the Lord says, Amen. Fire by night and a cloud by day. Shekinah glory. We've got the Holy Spirit with us. We got a lot. God has been pleased to show us here this uh, verse 28. For in Him we live and move and have our being. And uh, how elementary that my thoughts have been there in times past. But God don't God don't leave us there. He shows you that there's a whole lot more to it than what you realize. So how how are you working out your salvation? Um great deal of the time now, Clay, I walk around and when I'm walking on that dirt, God's saying, That's my dirt. God didn't make dirt. He didn't put something together and make he created it. In him we live and move and have our being. You walking on God. Everything everything you come into contact with, there's enough glory in this present world, in this creation to send everybody to hell if you don't know God. It's in him. That's fearful because you just try to ask the blessing every time you pop a, a starlight peppermint in your mouth. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. It's coming down to that. that. Is he ever present? Am I ever conscious of him? And when I'm not, I am fearful. Uh, and I need to be fearful when I'm fearful. <laughs> Uh, in the last part of the verse, he says, A certain also of your own poets have said, For we also are his offspring. Look at Romans chapter number 8. See if we can lay a little groundwork. Get it? That's not a pun. Groundwork. <laughs> That's my dirt. What was man made from? Dirt. God made him from his creation. Gave him a body. Okay, that's no big deal for God. <laughs> Ain't nothing God can't do, amen? But what was the vital part? It's when he breathed into his nostrils. Man became a living soul. He ain't a dog. He ain't an elephant. He's a living soul. He doesn't have an instinct that God just gave him. He's made in the image of God. And he lost his image in the fall. Every one of us comes into this world screaming because we're sinners. We leave the world screaming. <laughs> but there is a remnant that returns to God. Yet when God saved you, you know, I was under the delusion... That when, if I ever went to the dreaded altar, <laughs> y'all have to walk in front of all these people. I didn't ever make the aisle there, so God saved me where I was standing. I didn't need no wood altar. I needed Jesus, my altar. That's where He saved me, and all that, all that old stuff. God said, "All right, now this is where you begin." And your salvation, I'm, I'm going to pay for. I paid it in whole. There ain't nothing you can add to it. There's nothing you can take away from it. Jesus did it all. And boy, how many times I heard that. You ain't got to worry. Jesus did it all. Jesus did it all. The child of God, when he is saved, begins to return to God. He's going back. And the the first place he's going to run into is the slew of despond. He's going to have many a fall along the way. And in those distresses is where Jesus is going to come to you. 
and you will understand that you're living and moving in Him and there's no comfort outside of that. You can't, you can't fix it. Everything I've ever tried to do when, when, when God was operating on me, <laughs> I wound up looking like a jigsaw, Wayne. <laughs> Be still, boy. Be still and know that I am God. Let me be your fear and your dread. Yay! Something worth fearing. You're living there and moving and having your being in God. Now look how bad this world is. I don't know if y'all have made it into Holloway's book club, but you ought to sign up for it if he'll let you in. You're in trouble, Holloway. Look how bad this place is where we live. Now, this is not giving you the green light to go out and get rocks and start throwing them at everybody because... you'd be the one throwing them at yourself. This world, this creation, ever since man failed, look at, look at verse 21, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The glorious liberty of what? To begin returning to God. To start coming back to God instead of just, oh, well, I was predestinated. Oh, well, I'm the elect of God. Oh, well, I've, I've got all the answers now. God saved me. Once saved, always saved. That's the Baptist downfall. And though it be true there, so you must understand what you're saying. That in your salvation, you're working out. Your salvation with fear and trembling, knowing that if it, you cannot fool a child of God in this one thing, that they know that they must stand in the presence of a holy God in perfect righteousness without sin, and the only way you can get it is by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! To God be the glory in Christ. And when you begin returning to God, you begin to see more and more and more. Look at verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and the travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan. With. See, you're saved, but you're still groaning. You still got that unction within you that knows that I've got to come back to a holy God. And all along the way, that old devil is trying to fool you into thinking that there's something you got to do. There's something not getting done yet. There's something and, and he'll run you. He'll run you like a dog. There's so it ain't going to work. The child of God can find no comfort in his soul but that foundation which is laid in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't want no other, I don't want no other salvation, but you can't fool a child of God, Brother Wayne. He knows that if you see him in glory, it will be because Jesus Christ came and got him. Here's another one that they may say, I can't help but preach. And uh, when Jesus said that I got 99 and 9 of these sheep here and one of them goes astray and we preach it as though, well, that was just that time when God went and got that lost one out there and brought him into the fold. Oh, how sweet. Ding dong. Jesus come and gets you many times in your life because you go astray because you ain't got enough sense to stay on the straight and narrow. <laughs> many are called. Few are chosen. Just so this Bible says that only a tenth will return. But why don't we preach that? Oh, we want to fill up the, we want to fill up these humongous buildings with all those that say that they're God, but they ain't done no business with God. All we've done is chosen the type of people that we want to be around. Dear soul, you are a sinner and you are saved by grace unto glory. Hallelujah. 
And I'll tell you what, this thing makes you so sick on your stomach, you'll, you, you'll need some Pepto-Bismol. Help me, Jesus. Because this ain't in your hands. Look at Revelation 10. Woo, son, the whole creation's groaning. Every time there's an earthquake, this world's travailing in pain because of that order. Hey, Brother Wayne, guess what? God used to water the earth from the ground. And after sin, God said, I let it rain from the sky. God don't, it don't matter where God brings it from. He brings it from everywhere because it's in Him. In Him. In Him. Dear soul, this week, and you're in your life, please, as you take a step, think about that's God's dirt every time you take a step, that you're in God right there, and there ain't no place you can go to get away from Him. David said, if I make my bed in hell, thou art there. You can't even get away from God in hell. <laughs> that's what makes hell, hell. His Word of God is looking you in the face. And you ain't going to be saying, I want out of here because you know you where you belong. But the child of God's going to be singing glory to God that they're in glory because they know they deserve that. But God has took all of their sins, as Brother Micah said in the book of Micah. He said, I will pass by your iniquities. I will pass by your transgressions. I will take your sin and throw it into the ocean, into the deep, and put it behind me. I don't even see you like you're feeling about yourself. Your sin is paid for, and bless God when you see it, and you know what an angry God could have done to you, you'll begin to return to him. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. That you got ears to hear. The only reason you can hear is because God pierced your ear. The only reason you can see is because God opened your eyes. You got a lot to be thankful for. But it ain't about your 401. <laughs> they gonna take that. It ain't about all the insurance you got. They're going to take that. It ain't about everything in this life that you can get and grab. It ain't torn. It's God's. In Him, you live and you move and you have your being. In uh, chapter number 10, did I say? Oh, bless God. I don't know why I'm trying to preach so fast. In verse number 1, a zeal God's house eats you up, Brother Wayne. It'll, it'll eat you up and, and, and until you get it out. God fills the vessel up, and if you don't get it out, Jackson, it'll burst. And you don't put this in old wine bottles because they'll bust. You put new wine in new bottles. And when it starts to ferment, it, it can take it. So you find out what I'm talking about, Clay. Look at verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Woo! Look at Jesus, Keaton. Look at him. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the earth. And he said, oh, this is mine. In him. Jesus was living and moving. That part of Christ which was made, that was born of the virgin, was made. Do you get it? It was not created. It was made. And it was brought into the realm of spirituality in a way that no man had ever done before. So much so that God was pleased with it, even at his baptism. Uh, God says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Isn't he handling his vessel well? Isn't he doing, didn't he do it good at 12 years old when he subjected himself to his mother and his father and God too, balancing the whole act all along the way doing what a man should do with his mother and father and doing what a child should do in the presence of Almighty God taking every step on God's dirt. He said, I can do nothing of myself. It is my father. This old strength that was in Christ was not him abusing his office and just turning you into an ash. It was him using what man is born with that ain't got enough dadgum sense to use. They marveled that such power was given unto men when Jesus would heal somebody. 
And he wouldn't just heal one person, he'd heal the whole town. <laughs> this old day was people coming out and touching him on the hem. They'd spend all they'd spend on doctors. And she says, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'd be made whole. And Jesus in the midst of the crowd says, who touched me? That's how keen you are when you're walking on God's dirt, knowing in him you live and move and have your being. Every thump of your heart's in God. You ain't God but so many of them. And God is going to come a-calling for that which is his. Every soul that's ever born is going to return to him and give an account for every word uttered. Ooh, son. Y'all, Mike Walker ain't looking forward to that. <laughs> and that woman right there can tell you. You're so, God don't leave no stone unturned. You either need Jesus or you don't. We don't need no easy believism. Well, I made that trip down to the altar back in 1968. <laughs> Somebody go out and eat more than that. <laughs> that ain't going to cut it. It ain't going to cut it. You got to go home to Jesus. It ain't how, the, it ain't how you start, it's how you finish. Let me tell you something. When, when God birthed me from above, I could fix anybody. Oh, stand back and let me straighten that out for you. Now I just keep my head down. <laughs> because when the fire falls, it falls. Help me, Jesus. Amen. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Dear so when Jesus said on Calvary's hill, he said, Father, Father. He cried, my strength, my strength. He calls him my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? He is the only man that could ever say that. And say it in sincerity with a plea to God expecting an answer. Hallelujah. He, he's that one that stands in the gap, dear soul. He's the one that paid for that you're feeling in your soul that there's no peace for. He's the one. He's the one who loves you. you let no other have you. Hallelujah. Ain't God good? Oh, my soul. Look at Matthew 14. How, how much does Jesus believe that he's living and moving in God? You say, well, he is God. No, you, you ain't getting it, dear soul. It, it's, well, well, you getting it. Maybe I ain't getting it. But anyway, I want to get it, don't you? In, in verse number 24, he, uh, watch this. How much does he live and move in God? Well, it's so simple, I'm going to let Keaton tell you. Go ahead, Keaton. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it this time. Look at verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the, sea, for the, uh, the wind was contrary. You ever been in the wind that's contrary? You ever been, is anything in your life contrary? <laughs> Dear soul, I don't know nothing but contrary. That's all I know anymore. It's contrary. Well, who are you living and moving in? God. <laughs> who are you afraid of? I'm afraid as to whether or not I'm in this working out my salvation. That's my fear. Is Lord, keep me on that straight, that narrow. Watch. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the sea. What's he taking possession of? Oh, we just, oh, he's walking on water. No! Oh! He's taking the creation back. He is walking on water. He's living and moving in God. This place is out of order. 
That's why you see what you see in this land, in this world. It's out of God's order. It ain't never going to be right. If God wanted to fix it, he fixed it. He's going to burn it. He already flooded it one time. And it didn't do him no good, Brother Wayne. He said man's heart's continually evil. He's wicked. Even, the, even destroying everybody but one man and his family. Ain't done them no good. Still they go on. How great is this man, Jesus? He's walking on water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, there it is again. They were troubled. What would you do if you saw somebody walking on water in a storm? Would you be troubled? I'd be troubled. Saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. I am in control of this. Oh, sweet Jesus. Look at Matthew 8. Hey, well, isn't it good when you start reading your Bible and God's there with you? I'll tell you something Bunyan said, Joseph. This ain't in your book. But he, he said a lot of words spoken without your heart is wasted words. A few words spoken with your heart is worth a lot more. You start trying to talk to God with that and you'll see how foolish you are and how far away that you are even after you've known God. Amen? Lord, I, I, man, I, I, I look at where I've progressed from since 28 years old when God saved me. And I, I think, woe is me. Lord, I didn't, I, I didn't have the, the revelation of God that I was walking on your dirt. That I was walking in having my being on you. Jesus takes that back. Because it's got to be acknowledged. God makes something this glorious. And he won't have it any other way. But for that image of him. That man that he's going to be stamped on for eternity. Until one of them gets it right. And that's what Jesus did for you. Dear so he was absorbing all that wrath of God on that tree. Brother Joseph said he was so weak in the garden that he, I'll tell on you, that he needed help. He was too weak to get there. And there had to be an angel sent to him to strengthen him, to remind him what he's doing here. When you're in the midst of your trials, do you ever have to be reminded what you're doing here? What'd you say? Speak up, brother. Tell the world. Let your light shine before men. It's God's world. Oh, my soul. <clears throat> Look at uh, verse number 27 right there. And, but the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? <laughs> What? Even the winds and the sea obey him. When Jesus said, if you had faith the size of the grain of a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed in the world, if you had that much, you could say to that mountain, be thou cast into the sea, and it would jump in the sea. Does that tell you where we at? Does that tell you how far from what this man is like, what we've been all our days and will continue to be until Jesus comes and gets us? Hey, I'm, I, I go stray all the time. <laughs> That's all I do. That's what I do. Even at my best, it's filthy rags. The very best I can do is just dung. 
When you've done all that you can do to stand, say, Lord, we are still unprofitable servants. <laughs> it's the truth, Ms. Kim. It's the, y'all know y'all my family? Y'all my family. You might not like me, but you my family. <laughs> you don't choose your family. You choose your friends. But you my family. Huh? You got drafted. God chose you. Hallelujah. He didn't pass you by. He took your sins into the depth of the ocean. He destroyed your sins. He met them head on. That's good stuff, Jackson. That's a comfortable place, ain't it, buddy? That feels good right there. That's a good sign. That a man feels that in his heart. Knows that in his soul. That without Jesus, I can do nothing. Ain't God good? Remember what he tells Daniel in chapter 12? <clears throat> Further along, I must hurry along. Y'all, we only here a little while. We're only here just a little while. What you here for? Give glory to God in redemption. God wants His glory for His Son in your redemption. Are you, are, it, when you think of God's redemption, when you think of the price of Christ's blood, do you say, well, Jesus satisfied, he appeased an angry God, but all this stuff I have that I'm still love, it's still there. No, it's not. The value of this blood, the value is that God has flat out forgiven you. You don't owe nothing. You're free. But are you free to go back into what you were? Is it right that you should tax the blood of Christ again for what you know is wrong? Though we do. We are not to abide there. We are not to get comfortable there. We are to return to God for this great price because God don't see it. He said, well, he's chastising me. I know he's going to beat your fanny off. And you be glad he does because Paul said, if he don't, you're bastards. You ain't none of his. If God don't chastise you, you ain't in his family. Ain't no man ever yet had young as didn't discipline them a little bit. Don't make me say that a third time. <laughs> That's the world's punishment today. Man, it, it wasn't like that in my house. You could hear the leather coming off. <laughs> That's child abuse nowadays. Woo! You ain't never seen an Indian dance, Keaton, like I could do. <laughs> but I couldn't get away from it. Woo, son, that thing stung. <laughs> But the message got through. I learned not to get caught no more. Look, look at verse number four. That's the way I looked at it, Kira. How fast was you going? <laughs> hey, sooner or later, God will catch you down. Look at verse four. But now old Daniel shut up. Now, now Daniel, he's, he's seen the redemption. He's seen Christ come. He has seen him deal the death blow to that old devil, that serpent. Wounded his head. But the devil continues. God lets him continue because like Brother Gene always said, that he's God's cleanup man. He gets what God don't want. How's that make you feel? Well, it'll make you feel pretty good if you're in God's family. 
You say, that's a harsh way to look at it. That's the way it is. Everybody ain't going to heaven. There's a reason for their being in hell and them busting out walls ad knowns, as the prophet said. It's enlarged itself. Look, but the old Daniel shut up the words and sealed the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. We got any runs to and fro's in here? And knowledge shall be increased. Boy, oh boy, ain't I really something? I can understand. Dear soul, you can understand everything in this book and go straight to hell. If you don't need Jesus. If you don't know whose dirt you're walking on, if you don't know who you're living and moving in and it increasing, this don't go away. It increases. Yay! Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on the side of the bank of the river on the other side. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be till the end of these wonders? You ever ask that? Dear so, as soon as the cross is laid on my black, I, my black. <laughs> and the first thing I would ask God is, when is this going to be over? I do. When is the end? It's when I get through. It's when I get through. Is he a sovereign God? Yes, he is. Is anything out of his control? No, it's not. Is anything too great for the Lord? But I guarantee you this, you make things bigger than Him. We do. Until He gets you straightened out. <laughs> and then you know, you understand that this is God. That ground you standing on is holy dirt. And I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river. Great days on the water. And when he had held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and he swore by him liveth forever and ever that it shall be for a time, times and a half time. And then she, uh, and, uh, uh, Mr. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard this God... Is the church scattered? It, it, it ain't at Jerusalem over there like these bunch of morons think it is. The heavenly Jerusalem's coming down out of heaven. And bless God, you're sitting in it. It's coming into the world. You were birthed from above. That's the heavenly Jerusalem. She's a coming down. And you bet this, God's eyes on her. And everything in this world is about her. Dear so when I don't know if I chose her or she chose me. <laughs> but once I got her, all I've done is just shower her with goodness. What's so funny? <laughs> but that's all he's done. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, what, Oh boy, this will really comfort you, Daniel. Go thy way, Daniel. <laughs> Go thy way, John. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. By and by, by and by, we'll understand, won't we? Hey, let's look at Exodus chapter 3. Let's look at, 
I got a little bit of time left, so please allow me a little latitude. In Exodus 3, <clears throat> you say, well, you've been talking about this every week. I know it, ain't it cool? It, it, hey, it cuts down on my study time, Clay. I have important things to do in my life. Yeah, work out my salvation with fear and trembling. God, God showed me this. Say, oh, he thinks God showed him something. Well, I hope he's showing you something. Because when God shows you, you remember it. Verse number two. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. This is Moses. He, now, now get this. Hey, John, watch this. My, uh, God uh, in his heart banging, <laughs> going before him. He, he knows he's going to be a deliverer. He's raised in Pharaoh's house, got the best of everything. But when he sees that Egyptian beating that Hebrew, he takes it into his own hands and kills him. He murders the man. Moses is more meek than any man in the Old Testament. He's more like Jesus Christ than any man in this old time. But he committed murder. And what did he do with him? What did he do with that man? He buried him in the sand. He put him in God's dirt. In him we live and move. And now he's having to flee out of Egypt. God took Moses out of Egypt. And now he starts taking Egypt out of Moses. <laughs> and then he's going to take Moses and send him back into Egypt because you really ain't got nothing to say until God empties you. I ain't kidding. I'm serious. Me and Andy Brooker are serious. <laughs> I'll tell you that later. Watch. And, and uh, so he, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Boy, how, how many times have you heard that preached? That, oh, look at that. That bush is burning, and the leaves are still green, and it's on fire. And uh, Mo Moses is amazed, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burned. Oh, my soul, isn't that amazing? Who wouldn't turn? Who wouldn't say, wow, I've never seen anything like that before. You ever turn and look at God's creation? Kim and John, they're riding along the highway yesterday talking on the telephone. And uh, and all of a sudden, Kim, I hear her heart, oh, look at the deer. And there's deer everywhere. <laughs> we turn and we see the science that God shows us. But you understand that this right here, that God's telling Moses, he said, don't look at me out of curiosity. Don't be amazed for that reason. The real issue here is in verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes off thy feet for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. That's my dirt you standing on. Do you get it? It's not to the extent that it's just a burning bush and a voice coming out of it. But you're standing on my dirt and I will be acknowledged. Do you hear me, saints? I will be acknowledged in your soul, in your life. That's what God's doing with you. I don't know how many more days me and Brother Joseph was talking the other day. And uh, he, he, he asked a question. He said, where's those seven churches now 
that John wrote about, that wrote the letters to in the book of Revelation. They ain't no more. As soon as they spring up, dear so you read First John and you look what John says, that even now the first church born, the first church after Christ's resurrection, he says that there are many out of Christ gone out among you. Every world's waiting on one big antichrist and he's going to take over. And, and John's telling, he said, there's many antichrists that are already in the church. What's the antichrist? He's anything opposed to Jesus Christ being your only hope. We've watered down the gospel and we've comforted people. In, uh, it, it, sometimes a preacher is like the meanest thing you've ever seen. But dear soul, you, can't, you cannot compromise the truth. You have to abide in it. You've got to stay in it. And remember that you're on holy ground. You must be faithful to their souls. Because God will hold you accountable. If you do anything besides preach, I would advise you do it. I wouldn't wish it on any of you. What God will put you through. You think He don't care nothing about you. That's a familiar feeling. You are expendable. And He'll make you like it. <laughs> he will. You give glory to God in the midst of it, and you'll know that was God. It wasn't you. Do you know you've got a divine nature in you? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do, don't I? I? When I move, ain't I graceful? <laughs> you got a divine nature in you, but it ain't you. It's Jesus. You're living and moving in Him. And that nature in you, you've got no control over. He tells you everything about yourself. What did the woman at the well say when she went running into town, Clay? Come see a man told me everything I ever did. <laughs> That's what he does. He tells you everything you ever did. It's amazing that things that will come back and you'll say, oh, my soul, I can't believe I said that to them. I can't believe that I was that heartless. I can't believe. That's all I, I, I go around thinking. It's a wonder anybody ain't spe It's one they don't cross the street. Wayne well, just hit me. I think I feel better if I just hit him. I think Susan tells them to do it. Get your shoes off. This is holy ground. Got it? Because see, Jesus, that's what Jesus took back. He was in this world knowing these things. Doesn't that, doesn't that tantalize your appetite for Jesus? That, that he wasn't, he, he didn't just come in here and go through the motions, you know. He, he took your burden on his back and performed it and did it for you and God. He brought us together. And God was pleased. So much so that the value of this blood, you're, you're scot-free. You, dear soul, you're, you're going to be in the presence of God Himself. When you see Him, you will be like Him. You will see Him as He is. The souls in hell will not have that privilege. They won't know that. All they'll know is an eternal punishment for what they rejected. Let Him be your fear. Let him be your dread. Lord, Lord, if I ain't in this, hey, what did Jesus tell him? He said, if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, ask for him. 
Dear so, if you see a problem in you, you go straight to God. Anything you find wrong, you, I guarantee you, you get more, go straight to God right then. I don't care how ugly it is, how bad you are, what a, what a worm you are. Go to God right then. You got something you want to find in your Bible and you want God to explain it to you, explain it to me. Ask him, not doubting, he'll tell you. He will. Dear soul, this works. Uh, look at John 8. Let's take the religious crowd to task here. I like hitting them, don't you? They hit me, I'll get my revenge. <laughs> that ain't what this is about. I'm teasing. But isn't it amazing how much foolishness surrounds the mystery of God instead of just, just ask God. They'll tell you what God was writing in the dirt. Ask God what he was writing. Come on. Look at verse number six. This they said tempting him that they might have to accuse him and Jesus, but Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. What did he write? You're on holy ground. You gonna do something? Or are you just going to stand there and shake? That's my dirt. Get your shoes off, Moses. How about knowing where you at, son? I love that awareness of God. You know why? Because I'm so wicked. It reels me in, Jesus. He tightens the slack on me. Sometimes he'll loosen the drag, Keaton, and let me run a little bit. <laughs> then he'll tighten it back up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There ain't nothing God won't tell you if you ask him. Hey, that thief on the cross, he knew that Jesus was completely aware of who he was in and he wanted what God wanted. Horrific death. Terrible death. Unjustifiable. In our way of thinking. And God says it's right for him to be there. <laughs> and that thief sees it. And his faith reaches out and he says, Lord, remember me when you come in to your kingdom. And it comes back to him. You'll be with me in paradise today. When's the kingdom of God come in that thief life, brother Clay? Right then. People's waiting on the kingdom of God to come and it's coming every one of y'all's life already. Time after time after time. And it just keeps on coming. It just keeps on coming. It's spiraling towards glory. Getting closer and closer. Closer and closer. Ain't God good? Hey, I got... What's Pilgrim say? I've got to flee from the wrath to come. Mama and the children saying, come back. Come back. And he said, no. No, i got to go. Jesus... Uh, uh, and the apostle said, Come out from among them, and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing. Remember what ground you're on. This is God's ground. Look at Numbers 12. And, 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 and now you know that. Numbers 12. 
Numbers 12. <clears throat> One thing God's going to do, He's going to call you out. He's going to do it. He'll call you out. Get verse 2. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? They, ooh, well, this is Moses' brother and his sister. The Lord spoken only by Moses. Who does he think he is? <laughs> Dear soul, if God sends a donkey to you talking, I would suggest you listen to him. Hath he not spoken also by us? Oh, you're going to put yourself up there with him, huh? And the Lord heard it. <laughs> and now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spoke suddenly unto Moses and said unto Aaron and Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in a pillar of the cloud and he stood in the door of the tabernacle and he called Aaron and Miriam and they, they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark spe uh, speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall be uh, he shall behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Y'all on holy ground. Miriam, Aaron, Moses knows that. Your awareness of God, do not lightly estimate it. Your awareness of God is the place to be. They both wound up with leprosy. Sooner or later, God will call you out. Amen. Did it mean they weren't His? No. They were healed. But there's certain things you got to get right. I didn't ever know what Wendy was doing. But I most of the time knew what Mike was doing. <laughs> <laughs> but dear soul, when you know, you got to deal with it. Amen? And God deals with it. Look, look, look at one, one more place right here. In uh, chapter 16. It won't take but a minute and we finish it up. Who can do it? <laughs> Thank you, Miss Kim. I appreciate that. Amen. Look at verse number two. <clears throat> and they rose up before Moses and certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Oh, you must not know who we are. We're on the preacher committee. Oh, you are. Well, I wish y'all would hurry up and get one. <laughs> what? And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation? And when Moses heard it, he fell on his face. You know what happens to these people? 
God tells them to meet Moses outside. You, you get on your own time, you, you read this. And the ground opened up and swallowed them. Them and their families. That's holy ground. That's God's dirt. You live and move and have your being in Him. Ben, I'm so glad that I get to tell you that, buddy. I know this is hard stuff, Jackson. I know it is. But it's needful. It's needful. I've already begun praying for you and Keely. That with, with tears in my heart. Saying, Lord, please, when they get up there, let them remember us and the times we had here a little while. And what they've learned of God. Be with them. Keep them. Amen, church. I go for you too, Kier. You too, Jackson. Mo. I think me and Keaton just going to move to the river. I ain't going to let him get away. <laughs> Keep an eye on him. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. God's so good, ain't he? All right. What, can, can I read you one more? Ephesians 3. And I promise this is it. Well, I'm so glad Brother Wayne came to be with us. Thank the Lord for his mercies. Brother Wayne, I've met the best people in the world, they know Jesus. They're peculiar people. They agree with God, not, not stand against Him because they know what kind of ground they're on. They know where, where God's mercies. They know where it comes from. Amen? Isn't it amazing that the things that Paul went through, he, and he, I mean, left for dead, Floating around in the ocean, sharks bumping into it, and stuff. And, and it, it, he says that it's, uh, it'd be better for me to go on right now, for, but for you, it's far better that, that I be here a little while longer. Willing to suffer for Christ, you know. Don't, but please don't go out there and make people hit you. <laughs> that ain't suffering for Jesus. If you make them do it, that's your fault. But if they hit you for His name's sake, that's different. Because you was doing what you did as unto the Lord. You, you let them do business with God. Remember, that's holy dirt. That's holy ground. Even though you don't think God's in you you'll fall into that slew of despond. You, oh, God don't even care enough about me. I did it too. All right. Watch this. I hope you get this like I did. Man, I wish I could preach on it. Verse 17. Okay. I better back up a little bit. Go to Genesis 1. <laughs> In... Um, <clears throat> Okay, verse 13, Paul says this. Re remember this, church. And I know it's hard for many that have not found this in their path yet, but, but remember, God's going to call you out. He, he, he's going to do it. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. I'm going through this so that the gospel, which is for your good, can be preached. If a man don't get a message from God, he really ain't got nothing to say. He's just got a bunch of words. But if God gives him something to say, 
that's holy ground. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where do you put your knees when you bow? What do you, what do you go down on? The ground. Remember my, my cousin Patty told me when before her husband passed away, she said, you know, I know that we pray without ceasing. I pray all the time. She's, and then she started weeping and she said, it broke my heart the other night because I remembered that I had not, I had not been on my knees before my Savior. And I know you can make that a formality. And it, it, it doesn't matter what posture you're in, but to be that conscious, that aware of whose ground you're really on. And so there ain't nobody ever seen the glory of God didn't fall on their face that was redeemed. They go down face first. They bow. The wicked always fall backwards. Watch. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. See that? Earth, heaven and earth. The whole creation. That He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded. See, the love of God is going to ground you. That's holy ground. Everywhere you go, dear soul, is holy ground. The awareness to know the length the width, the height of the love of God. Praise God for Jesus. Y'all, I hate to shut up. But be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ. Boy, if you get that, you got everything. You hear me? I, I, I thank the Lord for today. Um, I appreciate what the Lord's done, allowing us to preach this gospel with both power and liberty, freely to declare the gospel. What will we do in opposition? Would we be we would be just as faithful? They've been they've been olden times where John Knox had to preach with a sword in his hand. Fear for the life. Shoot. Let's see how strong your faith is and set a musket off behind his ear. Wow. Your soul ain't no telling where you find yourself in the Lord, is it? <laughs> Harbanger. Where he goes, I'll follow. Amen. God bless you. I love y'all.